What's going on everyone? So today I'm doing a review on my TCL 65 inch 4K 4 series TV. Uh, it's, a, it's a mouthful to say everything that they title it on the websites and all that stuff, but I'll have it all in the description below. But basically I got this guy on Black Friday of 2019 and it's just my TV of choice right now. I was able to get it at a pretty decent rate. Uh, I think it was like 375 before tax at Sam's Club, which is super cheap because right now they go for about 465 or somewhere around that range. So it's about a hundred dollar discount. And yeah, so today the review is about the TV, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I mean, TCO does have the worst kind of reputation in terms of the TV material. Like it's usually on the cheaper end of things. That's why they have such a cheap price for a big screen TV. Uh, ignore the mess that you see in the reflection. But here we go. As you can see, I kept the edge tape on because that's what you should be doing. Never, re never remove this kind of tape because that's what keeps it looking new. Uh, in the back, it's a little bit thicker than most of the new TVs out there. This part of it is the thickest part, I would think. Basically, it comes in two pieces, the main screen and then the stands. And you just got to screw those bad boys in. Pretty simple to do if you got two people. But I managed to do it with one person, just myself. And it took me maybe less than five minutes to put them both in. But this side, there's really not much going on. Just a power cable. Got it going plugged in. The other side is the side that has all the video inputs and outputs. So over here, it has everything. And basically it has three HDMI, one USB port, uh, one ethernet, one cable input, one AV in adapter, one optical input, and then one audio out. And yeah, everything is back here. I'm just using two HDMI right now. And so that's where everything is in terms of the inputs and outputs. And then here comes the remote, which is something I really dislike about the TV. I mean, it's a pretty simple remote for the most part. You got the power button, back button, home button, the other random buttons, quick buttons that are really annoying because you can't change them. Netflix, Hulu, Roku, and then ESPN Plus. It's really annoying having those buttons like already preset. But then when you turn it on, which is what I obviously just did. Let me let it focus up real quick. So this is the main home screen for the TV when you turn it on every time. Of course, you got to have the cats in the background because you're living life wrong if you don't have them in the background. Basically, you got your home screen where it has all the features. So, I mean basically everything that you would need. So you're able to search for different material, like different apps you want to download. Since it is a Roku TV, you can download all these apps. Some of them just automatically come installed, like Netflix, Hulu Sling and stuff. But you can always add more if you just go to this ad channel. And then it even helps you get recommendations of what you might want to download. But if you don't want to do it that way, you can always go back and do it through the search down here and then look up exactly what app you want to find. The one bad thing I would say about this TV is, oh, let me ignore that. I was watching some college basketball, uh, is that you can't do a Google search or a web browser search. If you want to call it like that, you're only able to use apps and whatever apps they have. Like a lot of smart TVs. I know some of the better ones you're able to get a web browser. And then you can look up whatever you your heart desires, basically. And you're not able to do that on this, so you have to resort to using your laptop and then connecting it over through the TV, through the HDMI cable, which is another extra little hassle. But I mean, for the cheap price I got the TV, I don't really mind it too much doing it that way. But that's usually how I watch on my sporting things since I didn't get cable, because cable is a scam. But basically you get all your apps, log into them, 
using your cable provider, you can just buy an account with each individual one. And you got it like that. I use a little satellite thing that I got off of Amazon to pick up whatever streams are on the air. And I actually ended up getting a decent amount of channels. Most of them are Spanish channels, so I don't even know what they're saying. And then I got all the local channels as well. And I can do another video about that in the future because that's not something it came with. And one cool thing about the Roku TV is if you input a 16 gigabyte flash drive into the USB port, you're able to pause and rewind live TV and it'll turn it into like a DVR. But only do it for like, I think it's 30 minutes or something like that, which isn't bad if you think about it because I mean, I don't know how often you need to rewind and pause stuff, but having that little free way of doing it is pretty cool. So that's the main things with the TV. The thing I hate about the remote the most is you really have to point it at the sensor. If you don't, then it's not gonna pick up. And that little thing below the TCO is a sensor. It'll light up whenever you do something. And that's when you know you actually hit it. And the other thing with the remote is it doesn't have voice control. So you have to, you know, type and push buttons to do everything. And that could get annoying at some time. Like whenever I'm on YouTube and I want to search something, I got to type it in letter by letter instead of just saying it and then doing the search that way. But that's the main thing with the TV. As far as the audio, it's decent. I wouldn't say I have any problems with it but I did just order a soundbar and sub combo for the TV that's supposed to come in later on this week. I might do a review on that as well. It's the JBL 5.1 channel system. So it should be pretty good because I know JBL is one of my favorite brands in terms of audio. Um, the actual video quality, I would say is actually decent like what you're seeing right now is off of whatever my satellite from amazon is picking up through the through the air and i think it even gets hd channels as well so i think this is 720p right now that you're seeing but i'll go onto youtube and look up a 4k video since this does play 4k and you'll get to see a little example of how how it looks i guess so we'll switch to that right now so what you're seeing right now is a 4K video off of YouTube. I mean, obviously, since I'm recording it off of a camera, it depends how good the camera quality is. So yeah, that's the quality of the TV. So if you got, you know, video games like PS4, Xbox, whatever you might have, and you're trying to play that and have some good quality picture in the game, this is definitely the TV for that. I mean, you could always go and get the those 8K QLED TVs and pay thousands of dollars for it. But honestly, paying under 400 bucks for this one and the kind of quality I get out of it, plus a 65 inch screen and the Roku built in, I mean, I can't really complain too much about it for the type of usage I do with the TV for me personally. And also Netflix, you can always, you know, change the setting to make it 4K video displaying it and not use that data saving mode or whatever it has on Netflix so you get a better quality of your videos that you might be watching on there. But anyways guys, this is gonna be the end of this review for me. Uh, like I said, TCL Roku, 4K TV, 65 inch, 4 series. I'll have a link to it in the description below if you want to check out the specs of it yourself. If you're thinking about getting it and want to know like more personal questions about the TV, go ahead, leave it in the comments below and I'll answer it as quickly as possible. But for me, at the price range you can get this thing at, I would say it's definitely worth it, especially if you use a lot of apps since you can get it installed to the TV automatically and not have to cast it from your phone or do the search, like I said before, makes it way more simple. The only thing I would say, invest in a better remote for it because the one that they give you is tiny, gets lost easily, very sensitive in terms of 
pointing it at the sensor on the TV. You can't just point it anywhere you want and it picks it up. And then of course the no voice control on it makes it even worse as well. So that's all I got for you and I will see you guys in the next video.